it's a very, very gorgeous pizza. And just by looking at it, you, you just you know how flavorful this is gonna be. Mmm. Wow. This is not one of those fusion pizzas. Hey guys, it's Mandy again with Foo52. I'm bringing you another demo on one of my cookbook recipes, The Art of Escapism Cooking. And today I'm going to show you a pizza recipe um, on page 216. And it's called Tom Yum Margarita Pizza. So if you're not familiar with Tom Yum, um, it's basically um, a broad umbrella um, describing a dish in Thailand that is um, generally like a sour tasting soup. And it has a lot of aromatic um, Southeast Asian herbs like lemongrass, um, lime leaves, and galangal. And, and these things marry super, super well with tomato sauce. And that's why it's perfect for you um, to turn it into a pizza topping. And today I'm gonna show you how to do that. I would encourage you to make a start the recipe the day before. Start at least the dough the day before you're serving because um, you can't do it on the same day, but um, a dough that rises in a low temperature just has a much better, chewier, um, and just has a better quality crumb than um, doughs that rises in like a couple hours. First, we're gonna start with the dough, and this dough, I call it the mother dough in my cookbook, and the reason why I'm calling it the mother dough is because I used this exactly the same recipe, same dough, to make three different types of bread, and pizza being one of them, okay? And I'm not using a sourdough starter. I don't have a sourdough starter, never had one, but um, I'm using a couple more ingredients to kind of draw more flavor of depth and um, depth of flavor into this dough, kind of like a hack, if you will. And one of the ingredient is roasted barley tea. Um, you can find it probably in all Asian supermarkets, especially Korean and Japanese. And what it basically is just roasted malted barley, okay? That's which I've ground into a flour. So here I have my bread flour measured um, with a protein percentage of about 12 to 14. Um, you don't wanna use anything with less protein than that. You make sure that you choose a strong flour. And I'm going to add one tablespoon of this barley tea powder. And then the second special ingredient that I use is a little bit of yogurt. So what the yogurt does is it brings a little bit of tanginess to the dough. You can think of it as like kind of mimicking sourdough, but it's not going to be as sour as sourdough. So it adds richness and a slight tang. So I use basically 200 grams of plain yogurt, not Greek yogurt, okay? Because Greek yogurt has most of the moisture, moisture strained out. I don't want it to be too thick. So plain yogurt and 235 grams water. So it's a mixture of yogurt and water. And I always, always measure by weight. 235 grams of water. You can see that I'm using iced water with ice cubes. And I'm going to add, actually add these crushed ice cubes in here too because it's so hot in my kitchen right now here in Hong Kong. When I developed this recipe, I think I did it in the winter. And I noticed that in the summer, if I use room temperature water, it's gonna prove way too fast. So that's why I'm using iced water. And since ice measures exactly the same as water, so I don't, I don't have to worry about the amount. I just have to do 235 grams exactly. And I'm adding, actually, I want the ice in here because the ice, when it's being mixed into the dough, it keeps the dough 
cold as it melts. So here I'm gonna give it a general mix. Then I'm going to add that into the flour. Then the rest is pretty straightforward. I'm using instant yeast. And I'm gonna use like a heaping quarter spoon. And then salt. Make sure that you don't dump the salt right on top of the yeast because that might kill it. So I always put that on the side. And that's it. Now we're gonna put this on the mixer. So start on low. And I'm going to let this go on medium speed. I don't want the speed to be too high, but medium speed about 10 to 15 minutes. So when the dough is going on over there, there's another component that I would seriously encourage you to do it the day before, which is the tomato, the tom yum tomato sauce, okay? So here I have 800 grams of peeled, canned peeled plum tomato. And then what you need is lemongrass, makrut lime leaves, galango, which is a type of ginger, and shallots. So these are the basically basic, basic ingredient that you need for anything that is tom yum. I need lemon juice, two tablespoons of it. So I think basically this whole lemon. One tablespoon of light brown sugar. And really important, fish sauce, okay? I can't stress how important it is to have fish sauce in your pantry. Um, it's just such a superior seasoning option than just pure salt, especially in this case. Okay, now, just, I'm just going to blend this until it's very smoothly pureed. The puree has to be really smooth um, because the lemongrass has really tough fibers. You don't want um, all these fibers to be still present in the sauce. So now, the only thing left to do is I'm going to finish making the tomato sauce, right? Okay, so a pot. I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil and one teaspoon of Thai shrimp paste. Okay, this is easily purchasable on Amazon or um, online or anywhere that you can find or even just Southeast Asian markets. And it smells horrible, but it's going to give the sauce a really, really great depth of flavor. Think of it as an even more intense fish sauce, okay? So just like an anchovies, um, like shrimp paste really needs to be browned or, you know, cooked in order for it to transform into something that's fragrant and tasty instead of just smelly. Brown in this olive oil first. And it's going to behave more or less just like anchovies. It's going to break down and splatter. So once you reach this, don't let it burn. Once it starts to like smell nutty, that's when you add the tomato sauce. Woo. Make sure that you lower the heat before you add the tomato sauce, otherwise a volcano is gonna form. Make sure that you cover it, and then we're gonna reduce this by two thirds. And that means you'll have a third of your original volume left. Okay, so this is the next day, which is the day of serving. Um, if your dough, so see, you can see that my dough has has doubled. In the morning, you can check if it hasn't doubled in the fridge. You can just take it outside, and which I did, and left it in um, the, my warm kitchen for an hour. So now I'm going to really, really dust my working surface. 
and then I'm going to dust the flower a bit and then basically release it from the box, the proofing box. And now once you have the dough here, it's going to be sticky, but that's fine. Just flour as you go. Eyeball it and separate it into two equal portions. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm holding it um, a corner and then I'm pulling it up and then I'm folding it onto itself. Make sure that you give it a lot of flour, um, semolina flour or normal flour if that's what you're using. So once you have a tight ball like this, put that onto a very well floured parchment paper. I like to use parchment paper because that's just extra precaution so that it doesn't stick to the surface. You can see that my motion is very, very gentle. I'm not trying to disturb the dough too much. I'm touching the surface only. There's no more pushing and kneading and anything like that whatsoever. So like, again, you hold a little corner of the dough and then you just fold it onto itself and then you invert it, cupping it like this and then tucking it while turning it around. And if it's sticking, just flour your hands a little bit until it becomes like a relatively tight ball like this, okay? I like to very, very liberally give the top of the dough a good sprinkle of flour, um, of flour so it doesn't stick. And then I like to lightly cover it loosely with a um, plastic wrap. And I'm going to use separate pieces here. I'm trying to reuse this piece from before. Okay, and because I have a fan on in the kitchen to prevent um, the plastic wrap from flying away, I'm going to gently cover it with a towel. Okay, so at this point, the dough has to double and it's going to take about one or two hours depending on the temperature. This really, really depends on the temperature of your kitchen. If it's warm, it's going to happen really fast. If it's um, cold, it could take like two hours. So, so that depends, okay? I put a sheet tray in the oven. In the beginning, I put it in the middle, okay? And you can see that it's inverted. And you wanna make sure that this is something that's very sturdy. Um, usually the one that comes with your oven will do. Um, that is nice and thick so that um, when it's preheated under high heat, it doesn't warp. And then I'm going to basically just preheat the oven to its hottest setting, which on my oven is 250 Celsius. Then I'm going to change that to broil, but then I'll show you later how I do that. And then I'm gonna move, the, move that baking sheet up. Basically like a, only just like maybe three inches below the broiler, but I'm gonna show you that later. I don't need what you can griddle or crate pan, whatever you call this. Um, if you don't have something like this, you can use a, like I said, a heavy bottom um, sheet pan or here I have a copper one. You can do this too. Or even if you have a large flat cast iron, you can do that by inverting it, you know, using the flat side. Um, basically anything that is that you can heat over the stovetop without it bending. Now, as the doughs are proving and the oven is preheating, I want to talk about the condiments or the oil that um, that's needed to go onto the pizza later. Okay, so the first thing is um, makrut lime leaf oil. It smells like Thai food. That's that's what it smells like to me. It has such an amazing lime fragrance in the leaf and if you if you can't try to source it online and if that fails as well my last ditch effort is to go to your local thai restaurant and ask if you can buy it from them but i would basically buy a large quantity and i freeze them because these freezes really well okay then i'm just going to pound it 
The leaf itself is quite dry. It's not like a herb, it's not like basil or anything. So when you grind it like this, it tends to just break down into little tiny powder looking pieces. So this is what it should look like. Okay. All you're gonna do is add maybe two teaspoon, I'm gonna say, two teaspoon of olive oil. And then you're just gonna mix those lime leaf powder into the oil. And that's it, okay? So this is what you do if you need a smaller quantity. But if you want to make a big batch of this, you can totally do, th do it with an immersion blender. And it just smells so good, okay? So in the cookbook, I used a oil, leftover oil from another recipe from the cookbook. And if you don't have that, that is fine. All you need to find is something like this. This is a, um, a chili oil that is made, um, that, that has dry shrimp in there, okay? So um, I think on the, in, in the market, especially in the US, something called a chili crisp oil is so common right now. You can find it anywhere. And then there's so many different brands that you can choose from. So I would, I would first start there and then find one that, that preferably has dry shrimp in there because shrimp is just such a wonderful flavor that goes very well with Tom Yum. But if you don't, if you can't find that, um, that is fine too. Uh, you can, if you have dry shrimp on your own, you can totally make an oil like this on your own. You basically just chop the dry shrimp very finely and then um, cook it with um, chopped uh, Thai bird's eye, red bird's eye chili in the oil and then that's what you'll have. And if not, you can totally just cook some shrimp with a sh like, you know, preferably shell on until the oil turns red from the shell of the shrimp and then add chili and then use that oil. You can do that as well. And if worse comes to worse, you don't have any of that, you can substitute um, the dry shrimp with anchovies, okay? So you can cook anchovies just like how, what I showed you with the shrimp paste and um, until cooked cook the anchovy now, it's broken down and nutty, add the, um, the bird's eye chili and then cook that and then season it with some salt or fish sauce, okay? So you just basically what you want is a little bit of seafood flavor in the oil that you're using, okay? So, and I wouldn't be like too um, restricted about what kind that you use because it's, 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 it's going to, it's basically like a popping element, a brightening element, something that wakes you up. Um, but you know, you can use many options depending on your situation. Okay. So those are the condiments. The other toppings includes fresh mozzarella. I like to take it out of the bag and drain them. I grow these on my balcony. They grow like crazy. They're super, one of the easiest herbs to grow. But if you, if you don't have Thai basil, you can use Italian basil, that's fine too. So my dough has relatively, sort of, more or less doubled. I'm doing that fingerprint test. So, you know, I push it down and if it doesn't spring back too much, that means it's ready. So once the res oven has preheated, I'm going to move this baking sheet to the upper level. So basically a few inches below the broiler. And then once you've done that, I'm going to change the setting from top and bottom heat to top broiler, okay? And also on high. So you can see that I don't have a pizza stone in the oven, it's just a baking sheet. And that baking sheet, the purpose of that baking sheet is just to hold the pan. It's not, it's not going to be hot enough to create that crust that you want. And 
I've also before tried with baking stones in the oven and it just doesn't get as hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to heat this skillet on the stove instead of preheating it in the oven, okay? Because it's going to actually allow this, the, this bottom surface to become so much more hotter than it could in the oven if you heat it up on the stove. So that's, and that's going to basically create that almost charred bottom crust that, that um, people are looking for in a, in, a, in a pizza restaurant or in an actual pizza oven when the temperature is so much hotter than um, what you could ever achieve with your home oven. So I'm going to heat this skillet. And what you're looking for is it's going to be slightly smoking before you put the pizza on, okay? So you need to kind of time it a, a little bit, okay? So now I'm going to shape my pizza. What is this? I happen to have one of these things. If you don't, that's fine. You can actually, what you can do is actually create a, um, shape your pizza on top of a parchment and then basically move that parchment onto the, onto the, the, the whatever that you're baking your pizza on. And depending on how fast you're working, you can always adjust um, the, 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 the stove, the heat uh, on the stove top. Like if you, if you feel like you need more time, then you know, turn the heat down to low. It's all fine, it's, don't panic. Lots of flour on the surface. The worst thing that could happen at this point is that if your pizza dough sticks to the surface of your, whatever you're working on and you lose that air that you work so hard to, to get into the dough, okay? I really, really like judge how good of a pizza is by, by how puffy that outer rim is, okay? And then in order to do that, I'm going to basically push the air you can see that the, the, the dough is kind of resisting a little bit, so I feel like it could still use 10 more minutes, but it's okay. I'm just gonna slowly work it out. So you can see that what I'm doing is basically just creating a crater in the middle first, and then I'm slowly pushing the dough outwards. And this is why it's so important to really, you have to really, really keep the bottom not sticking at all because otherwise it's going to stick and it's going to tear and you're going to lose all that bubble. So what I'm doing is basically I'm pu pushing all the bubbles in the center gently so that it all kinds of concentrate on this outer rim. Now once you have a dough like this, you can kind of now Take it upwards and you, you're basically using gravity to help pulling the dough even larger. And meanwhile, you are shaking off all the excess flour as well. And every time you feel like if it's sticking a little bit, just give it a little flour. Once you're at this point, you can transfer your pizza onto... I'm gonna take it up a bit to shake off all the excess flour and then transfer that onto this... What do you, what do you call this thing? Do you, know what you, do you know what they call this thing? No? Anyways, okay. I'm gonna make sure that this is dusted with flour as well. Nothing worse than when you try to slide the pizza off and it's not moving. And that's when you should panic. Okay. Now I have this. You can see that like there are a lot of bubbles on the outer rim and that's what you want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to it's pretty simple and straightforward from now on. The tomato sauce that we made, the tum yum tomato sauce. I'm going to spread a layer. Again, then be ginger, okay? Don't tear the dough. There. 
and then fresh mozzarella then okay when I just when I said that you know the basil and the mozzarella are the only two toppings you need I, I lied okay you also need garlic and pickled chili so I have a truffle shaver here if you don't you can slice it really thin by hand I like my pizza really flavor so flavorful so I'm using like one to one and a half garlic then I I make my own pickled chili but um, if you don't that's fine you can use store-bought pickled chili and I'm just going to cut 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 important you drizzle it with some olive oil you can come here you can see that um, this is preheated it's really hot now okay it, hot enough that i couldn't hold my hands here for more than five seconds okay now i'm gonna slide this on here and you can hear it sizzling up immediately and then i'm going to transfer this in the oven which is super close to the broiler. You can't see, but it's where it is right now, okay? You know, once the pizza has a nice char around the rim, that, that's when it's ready. This is my default position. <laughs> okay, I think it's ready. Okay. This one is slightly bit more charred than I would like to. So I'm going to turn down the broiler just a bit to 200 degrees instead of 230. So you really need to adjust your oven um, based on what kind of oven you have. Now I'm going to transfer this away and then I'm going to do the second one. Go, 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 go. Oops, this one popped even more. This part could probably have a little bit more time, but my oven is not very even heating, so I'm just gonna have to deal with it. So you need to have a really nice bottom crust like this, okay? If your crust is not as nice and crispy like this, you can, no problem, you can literally put it back to the stove, put that on high heat and give, give it a couple minutes to, to basically crisp up the bottom. Now all there's left to do is put on your Thai basil, this makrut lime leaf oil. A little bit goes a long way, so don't put too much. And then last but not least, that chili, that shrimp chili oil, okay? Again, if you don't have this, I've explained before, and I'm going to include that in the, inst um, in the ins instruction of what kind of substitutes that you can use. And that's it. Look at this terrain of beauty. Oh my lord. It's a bit too charred along here, but that has to do with... Um, Every indiv individual oven is different, so that is fine, I think. It's a very, very gorgeous pizza, no doubt. With the bottom crust is also nice and charred and crispy, which you can, which is hard to pull off without a very extremely hot surface like I just showed you. I love, love, love big bubbles like these. And the crumb should be like translucent like that, okay? That knows that you have a really good chewy pizza dough. It's just beautiful. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. You see how the bottom is also nice and charred and crispy? Hot. Mmm. Wow. It's such an intensely flavored pizza. But this is not one of those fusion pizzas where 
it doesn't really taste like a pizza anymore. The amazing thing about this recipe is that it still largely resembles a margarita pizza. There's no doubt about that, that this is a mar margarita pizza. But as you chew, the, the aroma, the fragrance of the lemongrass, the kefir, I mean, sorry, the macru lime leaves, and the basil and, and that seafood chili, seafoodiness from the chili oil all starts to come out. And because of how things are scattered around, you're not getting exactly the same bite every time. Like this bite that I, the second bite, has a, has a piece of um, the pickled chili in there and there's that burst of heat. And let me try the crust. So chewy, so crispy. I'm not a big fan of those like thin crust pizza, which is you feel like you're eating a pizza on a cracker. I feel like a good pizza needs to have a good chewy dough and you need to be able to taste the bread, which is what this recipe has. This is such a good recipe. It's an amazing recipe. I hope you try it. And I hope that I really, really want to say that even though there is some uncommon ingredients in this recipe, I really would t ask you not to skip on any of them because every single little ingredient plays a very significant role in the balance of flavor in this pizza. So try to source out everything and give this recipe a try. So that's it. I'll see you next time.